Hi, uh, Matt Pfeiffer here, standing here with our DDA director, Mr. Matthew Gibb, and uh, we are standing in a very cool place uh, in Lake Orion, the old lumber yard. And I haven't been in here in many years, Matt, and uh, we're just behind the gate here, and I'm looking around and I'm kind of uh, in awe and in shock. Tell me uh, what's going on right here. <laughs> well, first, welcome to the Lake Orion Lumber Yard. Uh, this site is well over 100 years old, uh, and it shows it a little bit, doesn't it? I mean, if you look around, uh, there's there's some ha aspects of it that are beautifully historic, and then there's aspects that are like this. So, uh, the intro to the lumber yard. We are in the very first part of it, beyond the gate. Uh, uh, you'll uh, hear M24 maybe rumbling with the trucks out front, uh, only a few feet into the lumber yard. This is an area where the trains would have been on spur. Uh, behind you right now, Matt, is the old oil house and the old coal house. Um, these are very historic structures. You can see they're from this side, uh, maybe okay, but if you look closely, the roofs are collapsed and some things are collapsing. But from a historic standpoint, we're at the original heart of what was the lumber yard uh, in, in uh, Lake Orion. It's... it's uh... It's really cool to, to imagine what happened here so many years ago as I look around. But um, this place, uh, I mean, even walking through, a little nerve wracking with, uh, you know, uh, what you're going to step on and no, nothing looks stable here. Um, and I understand you've had maybe some issues with people coming in and uh, trying to uh, grab things or do uh, do some damage? Yeah, so it, you know, the, the site's dangerous. I mean, it's uh, we're not standing in a spot. If we walked around the whole site, you might find a couple of open spots and say, okay, it's fine here. Uh, uh, but the whole site is a little bit dangerous. Uh, the buildings are very tenuous. If you can see off to the side here, some of the original buildings really in the right breeze if they're not all stacked on each other, they would be falling down. And so when we cleared the brush and understand that this area, you couldn't see it from the gate. So as you came in the lumber yard, the very first day we came in, um, you couldn't see this area. And as we cleared it, this is what we found. And so uh, we've had a lot of people talk about, well, but couldn't I save a little piece of the history? And we are, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the, in the program. Um, but we simply can't afford allow from a safety standpoint to have people really walking on things and climbing up to get things. It is beautiful. You see the old wood, um, uh, the old coal house that we are going to try to preserve. Um, the original siding from the 1920s is gorgeous. If you're a historic preservationist, it's, mm -hmm. it's awesome. But um, you can see iron growing through trees. Everywhere you look, there's um, exposed metal. Uh, rusted nails uh, and oh and by the way we did do an extensive amount of environmental research here um, underneath the ground there's all types of different things that we have to deal with as we clean up the site so um, intro to the lumber yard it's a dangerous place and we are very concerned about um, just randomly letting people in yeah I, I can absolutely see why it's it's fascinating but um, but yeah I, I I'm gonna be very careful walking around in here the thought that you actually might be able to preserve this building is super cool and I, I love that idea I wish we could preserve it all but these are these buildings are gone for all intents and purposes there's no saving uh, most of this stuff in here in terms of for any um, uh, to, to try and restructure reshore up I mean I'm not a construction expert I'm a flooring expert but um, I don't see any any chance in heck that this could be restored. Well, it, you know, part of it is is the we're living as a vacation. Our moniker is because of our history, and those that are newer to the community, when we say this was built in the 1920s, that was the heyday of our community. And so you have to picture not only thousands of people that came to Lake Orion on a day train ride, but also thousands that moved here a hundred years ago. And so the building materials came here, this is where they came. The fuel to fuel all of that, this is where it came. On the lake we had steamships that were double-decker steamships. We had hotels out on Bellevue Island. All of the materials for that came here. And so the history of it is significant. And we do need to try to preserve some of that. But the start of it is, as you look around, um, we need to get rid of the, the piles of cement and buildings that with the right breeze will fall down. And so you're going to see um, a significant effort, effort at demolition. Uh, the demolition is not going to be, um, let's peel back the roof that collapsed and see if we can save a window. It's simply going to be a demolition. And so a lot of this is just going to go and get clean. Um, and we implore that if people have questions about that, if you're looking at something and you say, well, what if this idea uh, we're an open book. 
the DDA office is open. I'll look directly at our audience and say the DDA office is ready for you. We've had other people volunteer. We've got community leaders that are volunteering to say, how can I bring my architectural expertise? How can I bring my construction expertise? If you have that idea before we start bringing in the larger equipment for these areas, um, I'm easy to find. The number's on the sign in front of the lumberyard. You are absolutely easy to find. Seems like you're everywhere right now. And I love that idea. The idea that we have so much talent in our community. The idea that you could bring some of that talent in at this phase, um, I think is awesome and would be, a um, you know, maybe, maybe then we can save a few more pieces before full demo happens. Is that kind of the idea? Yeah, and we've had a little bit of that. I'll be very honest with people. It, Proactive people have contacted me and said, hey, I've got a really specific idea. As an example, an Eagle Scout contacted us and said, I would like to get some lumber that we can say is from the lumber yard and build flower boxes for the Flint Street Alley in downtown. We coordinated all of that with their, the, the, the head of the club, um, with uh, the mentor in the project, and then this wonderful Eagle Scout. It's his very last badge to become Eagle Scout. Um, he took lumber out here. So how did we do that? They contacted me. I'm not trying to control it all, I'm just trying to keep it safe. We made so they could safely come into the yard, we identified where they could get some of the lumber, and they took that for that project. And so we're completely open to that in the next you know, few weeks to a couple of months as we get through cleaning the site up. Um, but I just would please that a lot of people have said, just let me in, open the gate. Well, um, sorry, I can't just let people in because uh, we have to protect the public and that means them too. Well, yeah, and I, and I imagine if, if, God forbid, something were to happen under uh, approval in your watch, that uh, that makes the village, uh, which I'm a resident of, liable. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're not at a time where we want to be wasting money um, in court. And obviously, most importantly, we don't want anybody getting hurt. Well, we live in a litigious society. I mean, I'm an attorney. I don't like to admit it, but uh, <laughs> but I am. Uh, and all the waivers in the world, if you have a, um, a young person or an old person that comes in and falls amongst the debris and cuts themselves or breaks something or injures themselves, you know, in this litigious world that we'll have to deal with that even if we're in the right. And right. so the safer, more practical way is to really say, Okay, well then, Matt, what's the vision for it? Because we want to hear the vision of it. So, Matt, why don't you and I walk around the corner? Uh, we'll talk a little bit on the other side of these buildings about, let's start to talk about what we're going to save and how we can do that. I'm so excited to see the vision. Uh, so, yeah, let's do that, Matt. Wow, is all I can say. I, I wondered about this sign and um, wondered where it was. So I'm so happy to see it again. And... Uh, it's stunning, Matt. This is such a beautiful piece of history. Growing up here, I mean, this sign was out front of the lumber yard. We've all seen it. Um, and um, what are we doing to uh, preserve this? And quite frankly, as we look around here, how the heck are we gonna, how, I mean, there's hole in the roof. There's, you know, everything looks like it's collapsing and I'm not even sure we're safe in here right now. How, how do we go about preserving this beautiful piece of history and other parts of this facility. Well, the great thing is, is mystery solved, right? Uh, so many people have said, oh my gosh, the signs are disappearing and the beautiful Starry Night uh, painting that I understand was actually done by the mother of the brothers that own the lumber yard. So there's a lot of history there. Uh, of course, we're saving it. Um, it's here temporarily secure. Um, it's gonna move to a separate location where it can really be saved. But here's what we're doing, Matt, which is really cool. Um, those people that do reach out to the DDA office and say, I have an interest in, um, in um, trying to save some of the history or trying to just take advantage of what would be kind of cool there, we're fielding those calls, we're accommodating as much as we can, um, and we're saying, okay, we need to get rid of that anyway. Like, for instance, there's a little shed that somebody said, this would be an unbelievable planning shed for my 4-H club. And we said, oh, that's awesome, love 4-H. Uh, can you make a donation? And so they donated $500 and came and picked up the shed and off it went down the, down the road. I was super happy because there's a piece of the lumber yard going to somebody else's yard that can then be a marker of like who we were and who we still are. And the donation then goes to what? It goes for our ability at some point in the next short period of time to be able to restore this and reincorporate it into the site, find a home, maybe at the art center, wherever it might be is, is that's how we're handling that. Um, is you want a, a couple of boards to do something with, reach out to me. Um, uh, we'll equate the value of what you're taking in donation form. All of that's gonna go to preserving the aesthetics that we pull out of the site so we don't lose our history. 
I love that. I love a true win-win. And when you think about uh, parts of this being uh, saved and still being a part of the community and the fabric of our community, but benefiting this major undertaking that we have, I think that is awesome. Anytime we can double dip. Um, this thing, I, I am, I'm kind of got goosebumps standing here by it. It is, it is really um, unbelievable. And I'm so excited for that line of thinking. I think a lot of people just thought this would just be bulldozed down. And to know that, you know, obviously we know where we were standing earlier. Uh, I, I, I don't think there's a choice, but um, I love to hear that you're able, or you've got a vision to save parts and pieces and have them continue on um, and have the history continue on. So we're gonna walk through a little bit more um, uh, and talk more about the preservation of the site. So like, how can you preserve the site, still do something really cool out front, bring in a private partner that can help us do some of the things that the charrettes really designed? Remember, you know, a year ago when they were thinking about buying the place, it's like, well, can it be saved? What can be reclaimed? What can be repurposed? Or should we just do parking? What should we do here, right? So we've taken into account all of those charrettes, all of those ideas, but we've expanded it. We've said, well, what do the true preservationists say that we can save? And what does the National Trust say should be our goal? What does even the county Main Street program say that we can do here? So we've taken all that into account. And so where we're at right now, you might say, well, how would you save this? And we can't save this. This building is gonna come down. But if you're a preservationist, you say, well, but some of it's still good, all right? Not all the debris in here, but if, if you look up, the, the, the boards under the roof is still good. All of that beautiful timber and lumber, all of that wide two by 10 planking that was used 100 years ago in the creation of roofs is gorgeous. And so if you're a preservationist, you say, don't just bulldoze it, let's peel as much of that off as we can. We can use it because across the drive here, Matt, um, is the old coal house. And so the history of the site, the old Pontiac Oxford Northern Railroad came up here. Um, somehow they turned P O and N into Polly N. I yeah, guess you can see that. I said, maybe how, we're how did that more. happen? I'm on the Polly N Trail <laughs> Commission. And I didn't, yeah. um, I knew that that's what it came from, but I actually never knew the connection. Uh, I think you had a theory and I, I'd like to hear your accent as to how that theory, well, what that theory was. Okay, there's a couple of theories that I have, and I'm not the historian of the community, a couple of theories. Remember, we were Lake Canandaigua before we were Lake Orion. I remember that. Canandaigua is in upstate New York, closer to the eastern seaboard. In that area, there was a significant amount of Scottish and Irish immigrants that came from northern uh, New York all the way to this area. So in Washington, it was the Andrus family and the others that created Scotch Village up in Columbus Township. A lot of those people immigrated here. So my theory is, is you had a couple of good old Scottish Americans 150 years ago that were trying to describe, well, how do you pronounce that new fancy railroad that's going through there? And they say, oh, pay on in, pop in. <laughs> uh, I love it. That's a, that's a great impression, and I didn't know that was another talent of yours. Another thing I've learned about you, obviously, you and I have known each other for a long time, and I was at the design trep meetings at the village because of the importance of this purchase and this site, and I found it extremely uh, cool to have so such a diverse group definitely people that I might be on the other side of a political mm -hmm. uh, uh, fight from and uh, on occasion but the whole uh, a lot of the community was there and and uh, it was exciting but one thing I know about you and your family uh, from you sharing um, is you guys you actually have a background in in uh, in pre preservation historical preservation and uh, I don't think a lot of people in the community know that they know you as the lawyer and is you know working at Oakland County and our our past supervisor what the heck where did that come from? Well, you know, I grew up in a family that um, uh, really immersed themselves in history. And so as a child, we uh, moved into and we saved the Anders Octagon House in Washington, Michigan, which is on the National Registry. Uh, we saved the BB Homestead, which was the very first home in the, the, what was then BB's Corners, which is now the city of Richmond. So if you go further afield from where we're at, you start to see these little places. And my grandparents instilled in me an understanding of you don't preserve history and put it behind glass. My grandma would look around and say, well, if only these walls could talk, like what a story they would tell us about who was here and what was here. And so the nature of preserving history is about taking something that you can, can recreate and restore into its original beauty, but make it so that people can walk in it and they can talk at it and they can share the stories on the wall so that a generation from now, another generation of kids and our grandkids, Matt, if we ever get lucky enough to have those, mm -hmm. then they'll be in those walls and they'll say, oh, if only these walls could talk and maybe they hear you and I. 
And so why don't we do that? Why don't we go take a look? There's three specific structures that we want to save on site if we can do it. And it's a big if, if we can pull it off. But let's go take a look at the first one. I can't wait. Well, we are standing in an incredibly cool space here on the uh, Lumberyard property, and it's huge. I can't imagine uh, what potential might be here. Why don't you tell me? What, what could we... Well, actually, before that, that is one of the coolest things I think I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I, the Starry Night uh, uh, art is incredible, but that is also incredible, and uh, I can't wait to see that that will that be a part of the future uh uh development and from your mind well two things one is this is a community site right so if the community's will is um let's reincorporate some of these things that were here and we find that were created by the legacy families that had this place uh, oh my god 100 percent, right uh and so the second thing is is like is it better suited for um, a different place of significance in our community. Right now, I would say here's about the best place. So we're gonna save it, we're gonna protect it and preserve it. Um, Speaking as a village resident, I'll speak for the whole community. That thing needs to be a part of this facility. <laughs> That's cool. and, uh, and I'm confident that they'll all believe me. This is beautiful. Um, and I, uh, as you described, you know, some of, and I want you to describe what, what I guess let's just cut to this. What, what can we do with this space? What, what, do, what could you imagine with your experience and with the work you've already done on this project? What could this be? All right, so um, uh, it's pretty cool, right? It's uh, super cool and it's huge. So the first thing is, we're back to the question of, oh my God, look at all the stuff that's here. Um, can I run in and grab some of that? Um, so let's start there, and then we'll talk about, well, how do you dream? How do you dream about a place like this? Um, again, uh, this is a cool space. We've got cedar, and we've got different things. Um, if we were to walk on the ladders up on these catwalks, they wobble at a point that even the most sure-footed contractor construction people that have been in here to help us assess things have said, yeah, you can't let anybody up there, right? So um, it's not a safe spot to let people just come randomly come in. But this is a place where we're going to be pulling and organizing a lot of this material for two reasons. One is our own dreams as a community. How could we reuse it here and make sure we've got the materials to do these things that we wanna do? Um, and two, the rest of it, you know, the community should benefit. So that's the first thing is we're gonna make a plan so that this doesn't go to waste and doesn't find itself in a landfill. Although I will tell you a lot of it is old, rotty stuff, right? So then second question you ask, well, how do you dream it? I guess, Matt, how, how would you dream it? So here's, here's what I would say, put a picture in your mind that we get all of the debris cleaned up and we get these catwalks, as cool as they are, they're functional things for things, right? And we open this barn up and if you look closely in the middle between the beams that support everything, you've got this other beautiful space that can be opened. And we create this big wide open space. And then we take this concrete floor and we either grind it and repolish it, which would be super cool, or maybe we re-skin it and now we've got this big open space. And now think of all the things we already do in our community. So picture um, a 20 front street band playing on a small platform back there that would be at an event where we've got 300 people here enjoying Lake Orion that have walked on the walking paths from downtown into a space like this. From the ceiling, we've got um, historic light fixtures that would provide lighting in the evenings. We've got fans that are gonna blow to provide some circulation. And you've got 300 of the coolest people here all enjoying some act from Nashville that has come to Lake Orion to play at the lumber yard, right? So, okay, well, what else could you envision here, all right? You've got all of the clean space open. What you can see in the distance of those gaps, you leave some of that because that's a hundred year of history down there, right? But then you say, well, could we have, could we have a wedding here? Sure we could. Could we have a public event here? Sure we could. Could we host um, a conference here about uh, the Paint Creek Trail? Uh, oh, by the way, the trailhead is just on the outside of this barn. So when you say, well, what do you vision here? I say the sky's the limit if you put your imagination around 
what would you put into a 120 plus year old structure that you've saved? Uh, the first task is to get it cleaned up. This, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I get him really excited just through this, this whole process today being out at the site um, to, uh, to hear kind of your vision, to see some of the things we talked about over a year ago at the Charette, um, coming to, you know, uh, now being able to visualize it happening. And the idea of those types of events here, it's incredible. I, um, I, I'm super excited about the, where your head's at on this, and I'm so glad you're the one leading it. I know that you aren't one for accolade, but um, I, I really feel like you're the right guy to, uh, to help us get this thing done. Well, it's a project, but I want to talk more about the charrettes because this is the community's vision. Remember, we had oh no, this hundreds is a, of this was part give, of the give discussion. ideas. Yeah, we're just trying to fulfill those ideas. So let's take go out to the front of the building, um, and we'll stand there a little bit. And we'll talk. Okay, well, how does this become even a bigger opportunity? Let's go see it. I can't wait. So uh, we're in another cool part of, uh, of the space in the lumber yard and this structure behind me looks surprisingly solid. Um, what are your thoughts or what are the thoughts on this? I kind of remember a little bit from the design charrette, but uh, where are we at on this in terms of your thinking? So, so you impressed with what we might do with the barn? That's I'm that's so freaking to? excited about that. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I, that's the kind of thing that would... Uh, I can't imagine the demand you'd have for people wanting to get married there if that were an opportunity. And then for the idea that, you know, that could generate money to help continue to maintain the facility. Corporate retreats. No I mean, yeah, so many, anything, so anything. many things. Here, here's, here's what I want you to envision. So like when, when all of the community interest in what about the history, which clearly we're all super excited about, mm -hmm. Picture the top of the facade of the barn. If we took that old, that metal Lake Orion yellow lumber sign, Lake okay. Orion Lumber Company, and we restored it in a way that was encased and preserved, and we put it at the top of that barn. How cool would that be, right? That would be so cool. there's ways that you can preserve the history that are real simple, that you don't have to have big grant funding. You don't have to have all that. You can, you can do it in a simple way. But your question was about this. Um, wouldn't it be cool to have a farmer's market at a place that looked like a farm? Yeah, well, we... So, we yes. So how, yeah. how easy is it oh, my gosh. for us to, to take... And, and remove the structure, put some bracing in, um, take all of this existing lumber that's already here and create stalls, as many as you would like, um, and have the ability for people to come into a common area where we clean the rest of this debris out of here. We clean all of this up. We have a, a beautiful cement pad that sits under that barn that has to come down. And we back up some food trucks in the morning that have great pastries maybe we get Elena Campbell to bring sprout baked treats out here and in the morning you and I come here and we grab a beautiful cup of coffee and we sit amongst the flower market the farmers market the pumpkin fest the whatever we want and we got vendors that come in that help us design and build what could be right because this sets up perfectly um, and we don't have to invest as a community into oh well let's build a brand new something Let's take something that is ours, right? This is ours. This is who we are. You grew up in this town. I sure This did. is you, man. This is what reflects you of all of the beauty of what we're modernizing our downtown. We then can step back in time only in like 50 steps. Now, if you imagine the rail that we, I, we showed you out front, and we take that rail right from where we're standing here, and we angle it back towards the village, right? So where we're standing right now goes back past the big barn towards that old mess that we started at. And we take that rail, we lay it back, and then within the rail, nobody's been to Lake Orion. They're here buying pumpkins for their kids, and all of a sudden they look and they say, oh my gosh, what's Chautauqua mean? Oh, that was part of our history in the 1800s when we brought religious Chautauqua to the lake that made us this lake. Oh, what, they had amusement park here? Oh, they had hotels here? And we tell the history of who we are going forward in the middle of the rail. I love that. I I I, uh, I was excited when we when uh, the village decided uh, or with the or the DDA decided to make this purchase along with the village and um, to hear what this can be and and how it's developed even from a year ago when we were all meeting talking about ideas and I, I I'm sure you have other people that you're talking to and getting to this point but I think this would be a game changer for our village and for our town. I mean I can imagine 
people now, you know, starting to more and more talk about coming to Orion for a weekend um, to have this kind of facility along with, of course, our lake, our many amazing independent restaurants. I think uh, we create a destination which would help all the businesses and and uh, and uh, but with a step in history and, and a place in history. I think it's amazing. I love where you're going with this. So um, it's not all roses. We can get all excited about uh, about what's here and the potential of it. So the site was an old lumber yard, meaning if we look through these structures, we would be looking all the way to Atwater Street. So we're talking probably another couple hundred feet before we get there, almost 300 feet before we get there, a lot of space. That's where the, all the above ground oil and gas storage tanks were for the rail, for the lumber yard. So we've got to deal with the fact that that part of the site is pretty contaminated. It's not a toxic site. It's not something that, oh, you guys should have gloves and masks on. But it's something that as stewards of our earth and our environment, we've got to deal with. But um, the trail for the Paint Creek Trail ends there. So if we do that and we create the ability to, okay, well, that would be a perfect spot to create a trailhead for parking, for other activities. Now, well, where do you put the cars and the people? We don't have to disrupt the coolness of our history by paving this over. We can take that and we can fix the dirty dirt and we can create parking and different things back there, but do it in a park-like setting so it becomes kind of blended. In Detroit right now, they're creating parking lots that are parks, meaning there's a few spots here and a few spots there and trees here and beautiful nat natural plants. Why can't we do the same there? So, um, you know, people need to realize if you look closer, yeah, we've got a big a big uh, mess here and it is a big mess. And we've got all the dream and, and ideas of this, but if you look closely and you see that there's old rotted lumber piles and there's old rotted oil generators and there's old everything laying around, yeah. All of this has to be um, handled. It's not something that we can bring a front loader and a broom and suddenly we've got this great site. Um, so it's a big project. But what I want to show you in the last part of our trip here is the back corner of the spot, which is um, if we can, as a community, pull this one off, then we put ourselves on a marker of how to do historic preservation with what we need as a community. So you want to join me in one last spot? So we are in the uh, getting towards the back corner uh, of the uh, of the lumber yard, and um, I've always thought this structure was super cool. Um, it, it, to me, it just uh, it, it looks like um, an old an old uh, bridge or something uh, from the outside. What uh, and it looks you know as I look up, those boards are beautiful. I, I see an old maybe a float or some old decoration up there. That's pretty cool. That's I wonder what the history is of that, but. What do you, what do you uh, what do you see here, Matt? What 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 could we do with this? Well, we don't think it'll fall over, so we're standing in it, Matt. But thank <laughs> you. I, I think today it won't fall over. So what we're doing is we're really giving it an analysis as to whether it can get preserved because it's the second oldest structure on the property. It was the original supply house. Um, it um, sat. We're sitting really on the back of the property. So to give people some context, if you ride your bike, you ride your bike by it because the mm -hmm. trail that got built about. 15 years ago at the end of the Paint Creek that goes around into the village, um, goes right by us. And so you can see the bike, bicyclers going by. So um, it's just more to it. But I think the, the bigger question is, is how big is this place? It's, um, it's endless. Uh, as we're standing here, we're in that northeast corner. Um, and as we look out the back of the structure, um, you see a, a, like a, a bamboo line and if you look closely enough, there's a trailer back there. And then if you look beyond that, there's more back there and there's more debris. And we simply don't even know what Foley's back there. And so, so when we were up front, you talked about all the clearing you guys did and that kind of uh, that really rough area that uh, quite frankly looks unsafe. Um, we don't know what's in there, really. I mean, I can see a shed pe or something peeking out there. I see a trailer kind of sticking out. But do you really know what's in there? Does anybody? 
So we were in there when the winter was here and the leaves were down and you could see it a little bit better. Okay. Um, but even then, um, so much has grown up through and amongst things that it's really precarious to get back there. So yeah. when we had the first round of clearing out, what we wanted the, the folks at Timber Beast to do for us is uh, get everything away from the buildings and let's see what we have from a building perspective. Okay. See what the dangers are for cleaning the site. Um, so that's the next phase of it, um, which would be we got to get everybody back in here. Um, they have to be professionals. So if like someone thinking, well, I'll bring my weed whacker and my snips, um, uh, it's a little bit bigger than that. And okay. the heavy uh, gear that they were wearing, they even had a couple of their workers that were like, uh, it was a little bit dangerous for them to even clean around the buildings. As you can see, the debris, this was all full of brush. And now you can see it all. Uh, well, people were climbing on this to clean the brush right so the same thing goes back there i'm kind of i'm kind of thinking back to like uh remember when they did uh the opening of al capone's vault or uh, <laughs> or uh the uh first time they entered into king tut's uh um grave site uh the pyramid um i really curious to what's back there i mean that big trailer i mean we could have some great history in there too, right? We could, we could. I, you know, there's there's spots on the site and we're gonna do the best we can. If you're a volunteer and you wanna help with that, we'll get it set up in some way, but there's buildings in the front that have um, those resin slides that you attach to playground equipment you put mm -hmm. in your backyard. Oh, we got three of those in an old trailer that I would be afraid to climb in the trailer, but there's the slides. And so if we can get them out of there, that's kind of a neat little thing that someone might want to give a donation to the historic preservation of those signs and those types of things. And they got a slide from the lumber yard. Most people would look at it and say, yeah, unfortunately it's just, just debris. So you're right, we got to get back there. Um, uh, and we will, I think those are the next steps of what we're going to do here. This, this is really cool. I mean, that, that again, it's a cool roof. What, what, I mean, I know now in knowing you for a long time, but as we've been walking through the site, you already have at least a vision carried over from the charrette and the input you've been getting. Give me, give me a vision. What do you, what do you see right here? All right, well, let's wrap up with what the charrettes and what the public, what my predecessor at the DDA, Molly Alone, yep. did a great job. Um, what community, what people have been saying over the last couple of years. Right? Okay. So what do we need? Okay, the, the park, the downtown is clogged with parking. We need, we need help with that. So you can put parking. We talked about parking on the south end, parking up by the front by M24. Mm -hmm. Part of it we've already created temporarily. Parking that wraps around back here that gets people closer to the amenities. Um, people with challenges that have um, handicap passes, those types of things. Okay. Um, so parking. So clearly we can integrate parking in here. This is not going to become a sea of asphalt. This is not going to become like a big, you know, 13 and Van Dyke type parking lot. It's just not going to be that Good. way, right? Yeah, so it's yeah. going to be a park-like setting, but there are going to be some areas for parking. So what else did they ask for? Well, we can't continue to have events that take every space in our downtown because it long has hurt the businesses downtown that haven't been able to create a strategy. So if you put a giant carnival ride right against a business, then they can't really open, right? Mm -hmm. If you put the giant beer tent, then even cookies and cream has a hard time opening um, because nobody can get to have an ice cream cone, right? So they said, please build a place that we could have public events. So, yeah. you know, there's plenty of space here to do parking, to develop with private partners, but then also do a big open air timber pavilion that would become our pavilion space. People say Eastern Market. Yeah, I kind of like that, right? So the charrette said, do something like that so that we have room to do it and we can do these other things. Uh, people said, well, we need a place and we ha should have a farmer's market. We should have flower fair here instead of, it's very cool in our downtown, but wouldn't it be cool if you could come and do all of that after you have breakfast and lunch and you walk through the cool streets of downtown Lake Orion and you hear a concert at the gazebo where you have those types of things. So we as a DDA said, yep, we can do it. We can preserve the barn. But what do we get by doing all that? We open ourselves up to the opportunity to work with the National Trust for Historic Preservation, to work with the Main Street USA program, to work with these other programs, and bring in other supplemental grant money and grant funding and partners, and it opens us up to a broader opportunity. So long-winded answer. How's that lead us to we're standing in this building hoping it doesn't topple on us? Well, just imagine it yourself. No different than the barn, Matt. Just imagine what could be here. We fix this up. It's this beautiful old patina. It's this covered structure. We cut a trailhead off the trail. It's already there. We create a landing spot for people that have ridden their bikes up from Rochester before they just turn around and scoot back. 
Um, we could have a craft beer little tasting here on one day. We could have a Cub Scouts crossing over ceremony here on the next. We could have uh, a 12 year old's birthday party in the morning as we have a wine tasting for the Rotary Club at night. And it's all in a setting that's park-like. And what our dream is, is that you finish um, and then you say, hey, we should check out the rest of this unbelievable downtown. Oh, the path is right there. And we cut a path that goes from here to there and people have parked up here and walked into our downtown across the Paint Creek um, and they go enjoy it. So that's the vision of it all. And as our beautiful friends at On TV will show you is um, we've got a long way to get there. That's for sure. I feel so lucky that I already live here. I mean, I love this community. I love this town. But what you've described today um, out here and the potential of the site, I think is a game changer. And I, I'm super excited about it. Um, you definitely have my support. I love the, when the township and the village and the DDA and we all work together um, and um, I will continue to have your back on this project because I, I really think this is going to make a huge difference for our, our village and I sure appreciate the thought and uh, the process and that you know when Molly was still in charge and having you know the community come out a lot of times your community say well we didn't know that was happening that is you guys have given a lot of opportunities and I'm assuming you're going to continue to um, I know you've said anybody can reach out to the DDA if they have ideas if they want have questions um, uh, but uh, you're going to continue to have opportunities for people to bring their talents and mindset uh, into where this is going, right? Yeah, roundabout way for asking, like, how do people get involved, right? Yes. So in front of the building, we built a sign. Uh, my son and I did it. Uh, uh, it's out of lumber from back here from the scraps and we've got some signs there it's got qr codes on it those qr codes go to the dda website within the next week they will go to a specific landing area for the lumber yard that will describe not only what we're trying to accomplish but how they can get involved but really what's most importantly on there is the dda address and the dda website and yep. my phone number and my email and guess how you get involved you give me a call, you send me a text. That's my direct cell number out there. I shouldn't announce that. It is, it's the only number I got, uh, and, and uh, an email. And if you send that to me and you say, here's my dream, here's how I can help, here's how I'd like to try to find something, then we're gonna make it happen. And the more of us that do that, the quicker we get to do a little wine tasting here under the barn. I can't wait. I'm so excited and um, you know, I'm here for you. I know there's a lot of people in the community that are to, uh, to work together to get this to where uh, where the community can best benefit from it. So thank you, brother. I, I really appreciate your leadership. It's a good day, man. Thanks it's for spending the time. It's a great day, a great day. And thank you uh, to ONTV for the opportunity to share uh, the vision of this site. And um, I look forward to us uh, being able to share more as time goes on, uh, working together, Township and Village and DDA.